So this is kind of a neat figure showing you kind of the progression of a mid-latitude cyclone. Just to draw your attention to what it starts out, we talked about according to the polar theory, um, it start, it's associated with the polar front, which of course is between the feral cell and the Hadley cell. Sorry, the feral cell and the polar cell. Okay, so polar front. So it starts out as stationary front. I think this is neat, like I said, and we talked about how it turns into a wave first. You can kind of see that kink. It kind of goes head now when we have a well-defined cold front coming down and warm front coming up. And notice it's kind of taking along this kind of easterly or kind of southeasterly direction as it starts out. Um, if we could see the isobars around the low pressure, the central low pressure, that um, that cyclone, uh, how do I say this? I didn't mention it before, but I said that it, it will be, uh, um, the storm will be intensifying. So as we see that occluded front now, okay, beginning of an occluded front, actually kind of think those isobars are closer together was going to be my point. So it continues to mature. Here we see the occluded front elongated. This would be at its most mature stage before it dissipates. So you see the storm track, and also you kind of see the um, evolution or uh, the, the stages of the mid-latitude cyclone. So again, just kind of looking at a view of a mid-latitude cyclone, this would be before it, it entirely matured. We uh, don't have the occluded front formed at this time. But notice that I like what your author does here. Down here at the bottom, kind of like he did earlier, he looks at segments. He looks kind of at a cross uh, region of what you would see. For instance, if you are between segment E and A, that corresponds to E and A, and actually there's some even points along the way that you see as you're kind of, you end up seeing three sectors of air. There's this sector of air, there's this sector of air, and then there's this sector of air. Okay. Um, the next slide or kind of a feature of the mid-latitude cyclone is what we call this uh, comma effect or com comma shape, and the comma shape is right there. So that is characteristic of a mid-latitude cyclone. Oh, I thought we were missing a segment. And then the segment between G and F is up here. Okay, so that's a kind of how that goes. Now, I have a note down here for those of you who have printed out the PowerPoint slides and are kind of filling in the blanks as you go. Please bear with me. The next, I think, three slides have been, maybe I think the next four slides were bumped later. And then actually, you'll see even some more moving of slides. And the reason I've moved slides is to get all the slides associated with mid-latitude cyclones together. So they're different than, than you printed them out. So this is kind of a neat air um, satellite image of cloud cover. And you can kind of see the comma tail here. And you can see the comma head up there, and so this is the comma head. Does it look like a comma to you? And this is what we call the dry slot, and it's actually, um, and it's characteristic of of uh, a mid-latitude cyclone. So I wanted to put these slides with the mid-latitude cyclone too. And this is showing you kind of the travel, the different paths that mid-latitude mid cyclones might take. And they have kind of cool names depending upon the path that they take. For instance, if you've ever heard of a, a clipper, an Alberta clipper system, weather system, that's a mid-latitude cyclone that kind of has this path up here. Um, you might have heard of the nor'easters, uh-huh, and that would be these systems right in here, uh, the panhandle hook are kind of, they start in Texas. That's, that's the name panhandle hook, I suppose. Wait, oops, darn it. Panhandle hook, I've got a little arrow there showing you the hook of Texas. There's the yellow line. 
Okay, so mid-latitude cyclones, you know, where they end up actually, they are steered by those, um, those upper elevation winds. Remember we kind of talked about the, the meandering westerly winds aloft? That's what um, kind of makes this big system, weather system, move across the North America. So in order to get a handle on how it's going to be steered, oftentimes we look at the upper latitudes. Specifically, um, it's helpful if we use the 500 millibar isobaric chart to kind of look at what the winds are doing in the upper, upper atmosphere. So uh, the next few slides are just to kind of show you um, a case study of a mid-latitude cyclone. And it's a real life, um, real life event. And so they're kind of paired. We have the surface map. It's kind of a mixed surface map because it looks like we have some kind of radar information here showing precipitation. This is an early stage of the mid-latitude cyclone, March 23rd. Um, and notice they are accompanied by, this is kind of neat, their uh, satellite images. So you can kind of see cloud covers. So day two, the, um, I'll just put all these up here. Day two, it intensifies. I don't have a whole lot to add. Notice we talked about as a mid-latitude cyclone um, matures, now we have this occluded front right there. And also notice that the isobars, notice the spacing of the isobars is pretty darn tight. And our satellite image on a test, you would tell me that looks like what punctuation? A comma. And notice this is actually, um, I don't know what year this is. I should, uh, must be in your textbook, sorry. Um, this might be the one where the Unidome actually collapsed. Um, this was just a crazy day of, of severe weather for folks. Um, then notice we actually, um, on the third day, it's like nothing ever happened. It, this is to say, you know, it continues to move kind of uh, northeast and it just it dissipates there's not much there 